What's up my loyal subjects and welcome back to my channel. If you are a new viewer, you are most welcome to this lovely kingdom and please make yourself at home. Plus, smash that subscribe button to spread the kingdom's influence. Furthermore, don't forget to hit the bell icon to receive notifications for future mossy content. Now, before we start, I think I should give a clear explanation as to why I go silent then after a month or two, I come back with God slaying content to win you guys back. Well, the reality of my situation is that I'm a one-man army and because of that, it takes a lot of time for me to write my scripts, record my voice and edit the videos. Not to mention because of my good looks, I have to fight off the cats if you know what I mean. <laughs> A month ago while sitting on the toilet, I, I mean while sitting on my throne, yeah that's what I meant to say. <laughs> Ignore that guys, I mean come on, you know me, as, as, as the real future king of the pirates, I have an actual throne, okay? <laughs> I had a bright idea, okay, 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 you're gonna love this guys, listen to this, why don't I? Get some help. You suck. If only it was that easy. Firstly, it would mean that I would have to pay said helpers and I don't see that happening. Not because I'm broke or anything. Nah, I got plenty of money. I, I got a lot of money. I can honestly think of a million reasons why apart from paying these people who would offer me help, Let's consider the, that firstly, I'm in Zambia and the anime culture that has taken decades to develop in Japan really just started to take root in 2018. But even with this said, I know there are some of you going, but King, does it matter if they are into anime? Isn't it their writing and video editing skills they're after? Oh hell no. If me as an anime content creator hire the non-cultured, it's gonna be a disaster. I'll be talking to you guys like the news reporters in this country. Sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. And in today's news, local youth Sabo Malasha has been arrested by the world government and is currently waiting on the verdict of Supreme Court Judge Akainu Mambosha. But to be real with you guys, I'm just not good at playing nice with others. I'm like a butterfly and I need to be given the creative freedom to say what I want and offend who I want. Damn it, I just love it so much. Don't get me wrong, if the chance presented itself and someone who reads manga and watches anime plus cosplays and knows Japanese happens to walk my way, then I might consider hiring them. If you think you might be that person, then come on over and let's talk business. Now then. On to the real reason I gathered you lot here. <coughs> you suck. That's right guys, we are finally to the good stuff of the series. With the manga reaching what seems to be its final chapters, there are a lot of things that have happened since the last time we walked through chapter 222 together. Now I can go on and talk about the awesome war that just occurred but you know what guys that's just a lot of work so like the lazy sloth I am I'm going to give you guys a quick recap of all the major events that have occurred during this time. So after the untimely death of Draken we witnessed Takemichi experience an extensive moment of shock. It was always hinted in the past that Takemichi has been receiving emotional scars from all his experiences. But you know, it's shonen so he must rise from the ashes like a phoenix and conquer his demons. They ask you how you are you just have to say that you're fine when you're not. After an exchange of vague words from Senju and Takemichi, Takeyomi who is the elder brother of Senju and vice captain of Brahman arrives on the scene and is shocked to find out that Draken really is dead. Realizing that this is a declaration of war from South and Rokuhara Tandai, he then goes on to tell Benkai, another former member of the first generation of Black Dragons, to summon every member of Brahman. But South interrupts them with his presence and the entirety of Rokuhara Tandai. At this point, it seems a battle will begin as the tension rises and the blood begins to boil. The beginning of what could only be described as a Mageddon is inevitable. But from the darkness of the night, Mikey appears out of nowhere and barges in on the conflict between Brahman and Rokuhara. 
but he's not alone and it is revealed that the entire Kanto Manji gang is with him and finally all three gangs are all present and the war of three deities begins. In a battle that can truly be called one of the best and once it's animated it could even be the greatest in the series. It's really interesting to see certain characters that had only played minor roles in the past show their true faces like Haruchio, the brother of Senju and Takeyomi. His role in the past was quite vague but with the release of chapter 206, it was revealed that he had murdered Mucho, his former captain in the 5th division, for betraying Mikey or as he refers to him, as his king. What? His intentions and motives are not clear but we know that Mikey really trusts him due to the fact that when Coco asks him if he will join the battle, he simply responds, I leave this to Haruchiyo and the rest. But I think that for this entire arc, we are all just simply keen on knowing how Mikey feels about Draken's death. But like I said in the past, Mikey is gone. Because when Coco asks him if he really doesn't care, he responds with a cold stare. About what? Now, I just simply love the gang wars in Tokyo Revengers as they present the perfect opportunity for characters to show off what they are capable of. And this case is no different as we see the first generation Black Dragon's top men step up to challenge South. Blow for blow and kick for kick, we see just how powerful these guys are. But alas, even with all their flashy moves, Benkai and Waka are no match for my boy South. Oh, no, sir. In what could only be described as the most screwed up backstory scene, we see what led to the creation of the monster known as South. As a boy growing up in Brazil, South, whose real name is actually Terano Minami, grew up in the slums of Rio with his bedridden mother whom he had to take care of. He first experienced violence at the age of 5 when he murdered the enemy of his mentor, Dino. It is revealed that the title South was given to him by this man. With the money he gained from killing Dino's enemy, he bought himself a pair of shoes and thus learned the benefits of violence. Then at the age of 12, he killed Dino with tears in his eyes. At only the age of 12, Tirano Minami succeeded the gang Dino South. But at the age of 14, an enemy gang raided his house and killed his mother. With the loss of both of his parents, he migrated back to Japan to live with his grandparents. Of course, it didn't take him much time and he was arrested and taken to prison, where he would meet the Aitani brothers, Mucho, Madarami Shihon, and Mochizuki Kanji. With their ultimate goal of building his own era in Japan, I have to admit that Benkai and Waka tried, but defeating this monster is no easy task, most especially that the similarities between Mikey and South are obvious, with both of them possessing dark impulses. This man is mad, he even had the audacity to ask Mikey if he gets him, but with that look in Mikey's eyes, he clearly does. Now at some point with how Senju stepped in, I really thought that she would actually be able to beat South. In this show, physique has no place in determining how strong a character is, but it is clearly shown in Senju's case that this shit matters. With her knee dropping kick, it seemed like we would actually have another angry in the show, but South's dark impulses give him more strength than most people. Dark impulses in this show have been shown to be extreme feats of violence or the level of violence that one can simply control. It's like the equivalent of chakra or ki. The more violent a person is, the stronger they become. In such cases, however, it's quite hard not to recognize the reserves of such characters. Even if Brahman fail this day, their hearts are in the right place. But we have to remember that Senju is still just a kid and the heavy burden to take responsibility for Draken's death is too much for her. Yes, she is the leader but clearly this entire arc shows how unprepared for this war she really was. This wasn't going to be just another fight between delinquents but people would actually die and as leader she would have to step up risking her life for her comrades. Yet while all this happened, Takemichi still remained in his state of shock. The truth still remains that Senju is a principled leader with a strong moral compass. Despite being one of Tokyo's most infamous delinquents, she commands Brahman through its losses and triumphs while aspiring to keep the gang as it is. 
steering it away from corruption and immorality. Her ideals, however, are severely tested as she leads her team, occasionally encountering differing opinions from her subordinates that contradict her beliefs until she succumbed to an unresponsive attitude toward them. Throughout her reign, Takeyomi became her voice of reason earning her trust in his judgment until he succumbed to materialism and greed. He hinted at using Senju's power and authority over the gang for criminal purposes and as a result Senju hid her true potential. Senju is overshadowed by her older brother. Her refusal to involve Brahman in a prostitution ring resulted in her defeat because she had caved to Takeyomi's orders and accepted the business offer despite her protests about its nature. Senju is susceptible to Takeyomi's subjugation and defenseless against him, even being reminded to separate personal emotions from making work-related decisions. And that successfully doing so is the major difference between child Senju and Sano Manjiro. Now I have to be fair to my boy Mikey, the events of the story have forced him to mature quickly. He is still a capable leader but there is now an underlying melancholy beneath the surface. There is a great darkness within Mikey, he is forced to bear the burdens of a troubled past, teetering between the right path and succumbing to that darkness. He did such a great job in hiding it behind his carefree green. Without the right people to guide him though, he has become corrupted, becoming one of the most heinous criminals of his time. However, even when he succumbs to the darkness, he has contradictory aspects of his personality and contradictory behavior. He is seen to be drawn to and seeks to embrace a life of violence, committing multiple crimes or otherwise allowing his followers to carry them out without any visible sign of emotional response acting with indifference and a cold face and even capable of hurting or even gunning down dear friends. He exhibits this cold demeanor during his battle with Kakucho, demonstrating to Kakucho just how far he had gone, almost killing my boy, all while battling the internal conflict of coming to terms with Draken's death. And at this point, I think we have all figured it out that the central cause of this darkness is loss. As Mikey's loved ones suffer or die, it affects him on a very personal level to the point where he later claims their souls guide him, much to the surprise and concern of everyone around him. Mikey's mental and emotional state deteriorates as the body count rises. Although he was able to hide it in the past with his composure and calm face, the effects of this growing darkness have become more apparent even to himself. Mikey's moral compass has been degraded as a result of this loss. In fact, in every timeline with the bleak future, the cornerstone was triggered by the death of those closest to him, which allowed evil to fill the void in his heart by allowing third parties to do so. However, before chapter 232, I had a secret hope of Mikey finding the redemption he needs. At such a crucial moment, Takemichi definitely needed to make his move, before the vision he had during his moment of shock came to pass. While surrounded by malice and violence, Takemichi had a vision in which he saw South die at the hands of Mikey. As the two finally began their battle, exchanging blows with Mikey landing each blow on South, and South missing his attacks but still remaining fired up at the very thought of fighting someone so strong. Much to his irritation, Takemichi got in between them, declaring that if the battle goes on, Mikey would kill South. And in a shocking scene, it is revealed that with the blows Mikey landed, South has been beaten to a bloody pulp, soon realizing himself that he could not move due to all the damage he had received. As a desperate Takemichi began to try reasoning with Mikey, hoping to catch a glimpse of his old friend, he got interrupted by a murderous Mikey who proceeded to break my boy's arm in twine. At this point, Mikey is increasingly becoming more like his future self. This man seriously asks South how he would like to die. Skipping to chapter 233, we find out Mikey has beaten South to death and Takemichi's fears had come to life. I'm honestly proud of my boy Coco because after just witnessing Mikey's dark side once, he came to the conclusion that since Senju had lost to South and South had lost to Mikey, the war was over and Kanto Manji Gang had won. My boy clearly saw just how dangerous Mikey had become and guessed he wouldn't stop. But as we all know, Mikey has no restraint when his dark side takes over and he instantly looks to Takeyomi as his next victim. 
Oh man, I'm sorry guys, come on, seriously Takeyomi, after witnessing just happened, what, what just happened to South, he actually had the balls to ask Mikey, are you human Mikey, seriously, I mean come on, get out of here boy, seriously, <laughs> oh boy, this guy, this guy had a death wish, oh my goodness, man, shut the fuck up. With the wary Takemichi stepping in between the pair yet again pleading that Mikey stop. But this time with Mikey's glare turning to him and asking him how he would like to die. This is just hard to watch as we witness Mikey continuously pummel Takemichi to the ground. Almost to the point of death. And as I said before, we would have been pouring one to Takemichi if it had not been for the miraculous intervention of Senju, who disbanded Brahman in exchange of Mikey not killing Takemichi, surprisingly an agreement he agreed to and thus bringing the war to an end. Now join me next time as we look at the aftermath of the war and as I share my new theory of what really causes Mikey's dark impulses and the real reason Takemichi Michi can time leap. So that's it guys and don't forget to smash that subscribe button and hit that bell icon for future mossy content.